Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here from the Back to 12 podcast, and Texas Tech Sports will be officially back on Thursday, August 18th, as the first home game for Texas Tech Athletics in the 2022-2023 athletic calendar year will take place with Texas Tech soccer. We'll talk about that, as well as volleyball getting their season started here in the not-too-distant future. And did Joey McGuire hint that this quarterback race is over? at his press conference on Tuesday. We'll talk about that and more in today's video, but if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech Athletics all year long. We're trying to get to 500 subscribers before the start of football season. If you haven't hit that sub button, or maybe you have, be sure to hit it, and if you have already, tell your friends about us if they are Texas Tech fans and Big 12 fans in general. We'll be posting daily highlights of Big 12 players, maybe even in the pros. I've talked about Josh Young with some shorts, and I've also put some uh, Patrick Mahomes shorts on YouTube as well. So be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on everything Texas Tech Athletics and Big 12 right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. Now let's jump right into this. As again, as I mentioned, we've got sports. Texas Tech fans, you have sports in the 806 starting tomorrow where the Red Raiders soccer team will face off against Troy in their home opener starting at 7 o'clock at the John Walker Soccer Complex. Yes, Coach Tom Stone and the Red Raiders will look to really continue this wave of momentum that they've had in this program. Tom Stone is arguably the most underrated head coach on campus at Texas Tech. What he has done for the Texas Tech soccer program has been nothing short of remarkable over the last two, nearly two decades, over two decades there in the 806. So looking at kind of who you need to know this season for the Red Raiders, the name to know on that backline defense for the Red Raiders is Macy Blackburn. She was actually named to the preseason all Big 12 team. The Keller, Texas native was a all Big 12 freshman team member last season in her first season in the 806. And I mean, she played a ton of minutes last year. Let me get this right. She played in all 19 games and jogged, or logged, excuse me, just over 1,500 minutes. I'm telling you right now, I am not running for that long, and I probably haven't in the past ever. Um, let's just put it that way. But she is an absolute stud, and this is just a continuation of what Coach Stone loves to preach for this soccer program. I covered it and got to call their games for a few years in college. He loves that backline defense. He loves to be aggressive in the forefront and with the attacks and in the midfield. But on that back line, you have to be strong because of how aggressive Texas Tech is. And Macy Blackburn is the catalyst for Texas Tech soccer this year on that back line. Again, if you're trying to go out and watch a Texas Tech athletic event, be sure to go support these ladies. Out at the John Walker Soccer Complex, first touch is scheduled for 7 p.m. on Thursday against Troy, and we're not done there. They actually have a Power 5 opponent coming in on Sunday. They face off against the Wildcats of Arizona. First touch for that one is also scheduled for 7 p.m., so you got a couple of 7 p.m. games, and then if you can't get that one, well, no problem. They've got three games, the final one being New Mexico to open up their home slate. That will be Thursday, August 25th. A lot of people should be back on campus for that one, and that will also be at John Walker Soccer Complex before, well, the ladies head out to the West Coast to play Cal State Fullerton, Washington, and St. Mary. Should be a lot of fun for Texas Tech soccer as they are truly one of the best programs on campus and one of the most consistent programs on campus under Coach Stone. Speaking of one of the really consistent programs and up-and-coming programs, really when it comes down to it. Coach Tony Greystone in the volleyball program, these ladies are trying to get back on track in terms of their winning ways. They made the tournament last year. They're trying to find that consistency aspect. But when I'm talking about consistency, they've consistently gotten better year after year after year under Coach Tony Greystone, who got a very nice contract extension this offseason. Very well-deserved. But the names to know you need to know for volleyball this year are Carrington Jones and Kenna Sawyer. Kenna Sawyer is a Missouri transfer, but she's an absolute stud. I'll tell you that right now. She's an outside hitter and actually she led Texas Tech in her first year in Lubbock last year in kills with 364. And for those that don't know what a kill is in volleyball, that's really a spike or where you get a point um, for your team. 
Let's just say that. I think that's pretty uh, the basic way to look at it. Um, but she also had 3.34 kills per set, which is really impressive. And then Carrington Jones, she's been really a steady force for Texas Tech. I also got to call volleyball games for the Red Raiders at my when, my, when I was at Texas Tech. And Carrington Jones just seems to be so steady. She's the lifeblood of the program in terms of when you think about what to Coach Tony Greystone wants Texas Tech volley volleyball to be represented by, I think of Carrington Jones and girls like her, Emily Hill before her. Now you think about how long she's been there. She's been there for a while, but she's produced every season. And now she's starting to get her just due in terms of she's part of the preseason all big 12 team for volleyball. And the reason I bring up volleyball is, well, they have a scrimmage tomorrow. Um, it's going to be closed to the public, but they will start their season the week after and it should be a lot of fun the Friday after that, or excuse me, Sunday, you're going to be able to see the red and white black scrimmage. That'll be um, in Lubbock for the volleyball team. So you can see that. And then they start their season on the 26th in South Bend. Again, remember, Texas Tech Volleyball was a tournament team last year. They start up in Notre Dame at the Notre Dame tournament it for their season opener. So it should be a lot of fun to see how volleyball goes this year, just because I think Coach Coney Greystone is finally getting a lot of these athletes that he's coveted and really putting the program in the proper position to succeed. So for you volleyball fans out there, the first home game of the year will be August 30th against Tarleton. That one is scheduled for 6 p.m. First serve is on that one. So a lot of fun going on with just Texas Tech Athletics. You have games now if you're a Red Raider fan, whether you want to go see soccer and you want to get that Red Raider athletic fix, you have opportunities to go support these ladies both in soccer and volleyball starting off here very soon. But let's get to really the big thing yesterday from uh, Joey McGuire in his press conference where at the very end of his about 15-minute press conference with local media out there in the 806, he kind of dropped that the QB battle has basically been decided already. Um, this was the quote from Joey McGuire. Quote, I know y'all want to hear the starter and trust me. I think there is definitely someone that's taken it, but I've told them from the get-go, we are going to go all the way through the second scrimmage. McGuire also uh, discussed, it's now more that quarterbacks don't hurt them instead of making those plays that benefit the team, whether that's through the air or on the ground, because all these quarterbacks are mobile. And if you ask me, this is super interesting because the second scrimmage is coming up this weekend in the 806. Should be this Saturday, which I believe is August 20th at the time of this recording. So you think about that again. The quote is, I know y'all want to hear the starter and trust me, I think there is definitely someone that's taken it. I've told them from the get-go, we are going to go all the way through the second scrimmage. I've heard reports that all three quarterbacks had really positive plays. There were a couple of bad plays from each of them as well. It's very interesting that he's coming out and wording it this way that it sounds like the QB1 job is all but locked up. Who has it? We're not sure. But going into camp, it felt like, you know, there were, you could have gone either three ways. And it feels like this early on, it probably goes towards one of those guys in Smith and Shuck. That's me speculating. I don't know quite yet because, well, there's only a few people that do. And Coach Joey McGuire, Zach Kitley, the offense, and maybe even the quarterbacks don't know. But I'm curious to hear who you think will be QB1. We've gotten a little bit more information. I know I've asked this question a couple of times already on the channel. But let me know, who will be QB1 for Texas Tech this season heading into week one against Murray State, which isn't too far away. We've only got a few more days, about two more weeks until Texas Tech football officially kicks off. Again, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and help us get to 500 subscribers before kickoff in the previously mentioned week one for Texas Tech football. And if you love what we're doing here, hey, let us know in the comments. Give us a follow over on Twitter. Both Lyle and I will have our Twitter down in the description below. But for everything you need to know about Texas Tech athletics from volleyball, soccer, football, all the way to baseball, you know where to keep it locked to. It's right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.